let me show you how VS Code can support um, TDD. Yeah, let's see and it. In particular, um, using PyTest. So if you call the command palette and search for test, a uh, type type test. Um, yep, Python configure test. Uh, select PyTest, the second option. And then all our tests are in the project directory. So yep, first option. And now we wait a bit. And did you see what happened to the sidebar? There's a new icon with that beaker thing on it. Sidebar. Not sidebar. The explorer. Here? Oh, look yeah. at that. Yeah. So PyTest will, VS Code will discover all the tests you've written. And in this case, we only have written two tests in one folder. So it's in one file. So that's that's how you see the organization there. Uh -huh. And then the neat thing is that it's quite easy to debug uh, if you're running PyTest through this um, VS Code interface. So for example, remember we got surprised for, for the first test, we were surprised when we said when we said that you know column name not found mm -hmm. message. So instead of um, printing doing a print statement and you know ruining <laughs> ruining your code, you could have just put a breakpoint. So uh, do you know how, do you know how to insert breakpoints? Uh, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So there and then you run the test in debug mode. So for example. Uh, okay, yeah, if, if you click there, then it will debug, it will, de it will run both tests. But let's say you just want to focus on the first test. So you will expand this and then, yeah, just click the debug icon for the first test. Mm -hmm. Wait for it. Yeah, see, it pauses execution there and now you can. Um, examine the state of the function at this point in time. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there's that variable section where you can examine the state, uh, watch if you're tracking a particular variable. Call stack is the call stack. And then if you wanted to execute any other things, you can execute it in the debug console. So let's say you want to see what is one plus one. You can type it there. Or if I want to know what call name is, Oh, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. So I can't just type a million print statements as I go? <laughs> okay, wait. And then here's another cool thing. Uh, besides breakpoint, there is this thing called a log point. Are you familiar with it? No, I haven't heard of that. Okay. So imagine that um, you... You don't, it's, it's very inconvenient for you to pause execution in the middle of your code. And you're just more interested in looking, in tracking how a certain variable changes as your code executes. Okay? okay. So if you were to put breakpoints, then what you would do is the code will reach the breakpoint, and then you have to type what is this value, and then resume, and then you know when it pause again, yeah, yes? Very cumbersome, right? Uh huh. If you're just interested in, in watching the value of a few variables, you can use a log point. And the way to do that in VS Code is you, you so one way is you put a breakpoint, put a breakpoint, uh, do right click on the breakpoint, and then select um, edit breakpoint, and then select, so you, you see that drop down next to expression? Uh -huh. Instead of expression, you do log message. You, you, you click log message. And this is where you will um, type the value or the expression you want to be evaluated each time the code passes uh, this line. But it's not that simple. There is a convention to follow. Okay. Anything you type, 
will be printed as is. Okay, so if you type this, guess what's going to be printed? Print call name? <laughs> yeah, literally that. But you don't want that, right? You want to view the value of the column name, right? Uh -huh. So let's say, let's say that in the logs, you want, you want it to appear, um, these are the columns in the data frame. Semicolon, and then the column names. How would you do that? You would just type, these are the values of the columns in the data frame. Well, maybe I'll choose a smaller message. This is the column name. Okay, and then now you actually want to show the value of the column names, right? So what you would do is you would call the normal um, Unless API to return the column names, but you put it inside a curly brace, a pair of curly brace. Does that work? Uh, this is the column name. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's almost like a, an F string. Yes. So press enter. And then if you um, restart the debug, do you see this part here? Uh, whoops. Yeah, click the restart one. The green, yeah. Now, if you look at the one test pass generated file, this is a cast. Can you can you go to the go back to the debug console? And scroll up. Oops. Oh, yeah. Do you, do you see that? Uh... Oh. oh, there we go. Yeah. So you're in your debug console, and whatever log point you define in your uh, files, it will be printed here. Let me ask one quick question before we end. Okay. How much time would you say, like, what proportion of your time is spent writing tests versus uh, writing the actual functions? Ah. So it depends on the project because. Um, on one hand, I do like um, really research-based um, project, like taking a model in academia and trying to implement it in a production setting. And on the other hand, I also am working on a current ML system, be it to maintain it or add more functions. Okay. So if, if I am working on the first kind of project, then I know that what I need to get right is the implementation. Uh, if my data scripting, data collection function, for example, breaks or it's wrong, I don't really care. So I don't really test those. Okay. So when it comes to the implementation, for example, if I'm writing a new algorithm from scratch or I'm extending an existing algorithm, I really want to make sure that, you know, I get my maths right. So that's where I will, uh, focus more on writing tests. And then if you look at um, how we did here, it the, the process is always you define the functions interface or signature first, then you write a test that fails, then you implement the test, right? Mm -hmm. But in practice, especially if you're working like in a very research kind of um, project where the requirements it's, it's clear what you need to do in the end, but the steps to get there, nobody has written down for you, right? Uh -huh. uh, so what happens is that I actually will implement the fu those song functions first, and then I write the test. But I always try to uh, maybe write um, five or 10 lines of code, then write the test for that. So it is very, if it, even if the test doesn't come first, it still pretty closely follows. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. 
and the reason you would want to do this is to force you to write modular code. Otherwise, you will have you will end up with you know one function that has like you know one hundred lines. <laughs> <laughs> like, like 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 let's say you know uh, the goal is to build an SBI model to do X. So then you will, you will write one function that you know will pull your data and then do your feature engineering and then you know build the model. Uh, <laughs> no, that will result in unmaintainable code. Yeah, so that's how I do it. Okay, interesting. But yeah, so but then if I if I was if the project is to is to like you know maintain or extend an existing production system, then in those cases it's very clear to me and also I usually get directions from someone mm -hmm. to say that you know this we get a spec already. So from the spec you can already think ah okay for to implement this I need to write this 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 functions. So it's easy it's your you it's easy for you you can already see the how the future will look like in terms of like all the functions that need to be defined. So in that case, you, you are able to follow TDD, just like how we did in, in this session. Interesting. Yeah, that, and that makes sense. I mean, the different kinds of projects will have different requirements. I imagine if you're working with lots of legacy code, then if there aren't already tests there, you might focus on making tests first for what you're implementing new That's right. um, before worrying about going back. Great. Okay, Mohammed. Next week, <laughs> whenever that may yeah. be, <laughs> whatever week is next. It's been fun, Zach. Yeah. See you later. Bye. Ciao. <laughs>